Hey everyone, Tony here again on another episode of whatever this is. There's no title. <laughs> so I uh, just wanted to bring a video. Um, this time it's going to be a little bit different. Usually I, I pick a stock and I kind of just uh, drill on it. Uh, but today the market is going cray cray. So as you can see here, clearly there's like five stocks that are green. <laughs> so everybody is uh, everybody's uh, bleeding up in here. So just wanted to kind of give a, an update on what, basically on, on what this is. So first of all, this, this is not a picture that you normally, that you're used to seeing in the last couple of, uh, of months or years, um, seeing so much red. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. So um, really the gist of all this from what I've, you know, from what I've seen is, uh, is, Long story short, it's coronavirus. Um, there's a lot of issues, and let's switch over to Market Watch over here. If we take a look, I mean, basically, you know, look at the the headline. It's just fears of a supply shock are rattling stocks and global markets as a viral outbreak continues. Um, so, yeah. So, long story short, it's let's for giggles. Let's just type in coronavirus here coronavirus and see how many results come up from just a front page of market watch we have 18 matches at the bottom here well you can't see it here but uh, yeah 18 matches on market watch here so yeah so the overwhelming uh you know thing is it's it's coronavirus so uh, it goes from the CDC saying how Americans should prepare for school and workplace closures due to coronavirus. So that's going to be, obviously, that's already bringing some element of fear or a big element of fear. Coronavirus update, 80,000 cases, 2,700 deaths. CDC warns Americans to prepare for disruption. Uh, how 2020, can well, that's something. Actually, yeah, how 2020 candidates would tackle disease outbreaks like coronavirus uh, coronavirus, the global economy is much more vulnerable than during the SARS epidemic. Uh, just that's the long story short. That's that's the main thing. Now there are some conspiracy theories. I don't know if uh, is that my face? That's mine. <laughs> um, there are some conspiracy theories that the market has been overextended for so long. That uh, this is a good way for you know for institutions and and just you know the people that be to blame it on something and now like wow well, finally we have a catalyst something that we can blame it on and the market's gonna dump so I guess what I'm gonna use this video for is to use um, and again it's still early into this whole coronavirus thing so this may be the beginning of a long recession it could be just a small pullback it could be it could, nobody knows what it's going to be at the end of the day so no matter what technical analysis i show you today it's uh the news and it's going to trump it you know no matter what i say no matter what anybody says it's just going to be you can't you know at the end of the day you can't do too much so you can kind of get an idea on the macro so we'll pull up a couple of charts and see you know the weekly and the and the monthly see where things might pull down to uh, but again there's no guarantees it's just you know doing our best I guess um, but what I wanted to kind of bring up now is uh, I've been telling a lot of people that you should wait until a pullback to buy in right because how do you make money you buy when the market is low and you sell when it's high um, some people can time things amazingly when it's at an all-time high and and it continues you know rewrite the trend and and you profit off of that uh but most people aren't equipped to do that um i think most uh savvy traders typically buy on pullbacks and you know buy low so high you know a lot easier said than done and um these recessions these uh these pull well this is not a really a recession yet this is just a pullback could turn into something worse, but this is just a pullback. So right now the markets are acting possibly ir irrational. And when that happens, that's a good time to invest in stocks that you like. So if there's a stock that you like, like let's pull up maybe Tesla. So let's go to the, so on the daily, you can see the, the dumpage here for the last couple of days. 
Now, it's interesting. So we hit this all-time high. We, there's a couple videos that uh, I'll try to link, but just search this channel and you'll see the, I have at least four videos on Tesla, I believe, since I started about a, a month or, or so ago. And, um, you know, I've been saying that, you know, we're overextended. And, but at the end of the day, nobody knows when a true, when an all-time high becomes an all-time, like a, like a local all-time high or an all-time, all-time high, I guess that makes sense. Um, so it looks like we're forming it now. There's a lot of stocks that are peaking at all-time highs. And, and now we have this uh, coronavirus. And we've had it for a while, but now it's finally looking like it's, uh, it's affecting the markets. And do you, what do you blame it on? Do you blame it on that it was an all-time high and it was double topping? Do you blame it on all-time high and, hey, these freaking coronavirus issues are happening and that's what's causing the market to roll over and not, you know we would have continued this all-time high maybe but you know the, the conspiracy theorists out there you know they kind of have a point sometimes like things get overextended and and you need a good reason to dump <laughs> um so i don't know i don't want to get into the conspiracy theory part of it all i know is that ideally we'd want to uh we'd want to use this as an opportunity if we can so that's why i always tell people don't buy high and especially don't use all your capital to go in especially at the highs you want to have some uh some people call it dry powder some capital to buy in on the pullbacks right because that's that's your opportunity that's where you can you can uh buy a pullback and then just jump back in so again this just all, all this coronavirus stuff has you know started a couple of weeks months ago um, but now recently is when we're seeing the market tank again, is it Corona? Is it not? Sorry about the microphone issue. I'm trying to not have it scrape my shirt. So what to do or what would I do? And again, this is not financial advice. So I don't want for anybody to go out and, and, you know, consult your financial advisor, make sure you do your own research. Uh, this is just my perspective. So what would I do? Tony, what would Tony do? Uh, Tony would look for a pullback, and again, I'm on the, I'm on a daily actually. So let me go to the monthly. Actually, monthly might be too. Eh, it's the same thing. So let me go to this ultimate low, and if I'm really bullish on Tesla, I'm looking for a pullback to the 38.2. I think that that would be a logical point uh, for a lot of stocks to to go back to, right? Um, especially if there's like a, it's the first stop or one of the first stops. The 23.6 is really, you know, somewhere around here. Uh, actually, that would be interesting to see if that matches up with today's price action. So let me add that real quick. Oh, actually, is it just a little bit below today's price? Or this, yeah, today's price is at 7.99, and the 23.6 is at 7.82. So. In my perspective, I just see a small pullback coming back. Um, and this is a day-by-day -day thing. You can't go to, you can't make assumptions. You really can't. I, at least I'm not going to. So I would just, if I'm bullish, I will look for a test of this trend line. Um, maybe a test of the 20 MA on the weekly, which I just clicked on. Uh, 20, the 20 percent not 20 percent 20 ema uh, which looks like it might go to the 50 percent level here of the weekly of this swing low of june to the all-time high that happens approximately february 3rd uh, so 50 percent retracement will bring you down to 572 i can see that happen that makes a lot of sense and it would still be bullish because you're still above the trend line. The trend line would act as support and the 20 EMA is right there acting as support as well. Would not be that bearish, to be honest with you. It's been a crazy run. So a decent little pullback like that would be good. What's another stock that's been insane? So we just covered Tesla real quick. Space, which is uh, Virgin Galactic Holdings. This one's been on a tear. So this one's even more parabolic than Tesla, if you believe it. And uh, yeah, we had that all-time high that peaked February 18th, give or take. And then we've had a small pullback. Um, let me go to the daily to get a better view here. Uh, 
yes, it's still, believe it or not, it's not terribly bearish in my point of view. Um, I don't know why I drew this here. Let me take that off. Um, so we have this, I think I drew a 45 at the time. So now you can see that it's respecting, you'll see a lot clearer if I do a uh, array. So if I connect these two lows, where's the array? There we go. If I connect this low down here with, is it this one? Yeah. I think, right? Or maybe there? No. You can see that we had, it's giving us a better trend line now. So we had support. So this little ray trend line has like a support, support all the way up broke it briefly but it's still acting as support and that's at a 40 degrees so it's pretty healthy it's nothing too crazy uh, as long as we're above this i'm still bullish on the stock but it's very toppy uh super toppy i mean we have this uh this ended up being almost like a at the time i think I, it would look more like a like a doji like a spinning top it looks yeah it's just bearish overall my my candlestick terminology right now is is uh, escaping me, but you can see that it's just forming what it looks like a little bit of an M. Let me see if I could go to the candle chart. Yeah, so if we go back to the candles and I draw this out, this looks a little scary if we break. So here's what I would be looking for with, actually, let me see, let me redraw this. So right now, yeah, we do kind of have this. And if it breaks below this candle low, then I'd be concerned. I would hope that this trend line acts as support. And then if it breaks that, then, you know, we have a little bit more of a concern because at that point we're testing the 61.8, which is not terribly bearish. It would just be more, it would be more concerning because at that point that, that parabolic trend is, uh, very questionable so going back to that linear that line chart you can see where if we break here which is basically where we are now um technically that's a that's a failure so we would be seeing you know kind of like a, a a small dump so that would be a break if it does break it would break this trend line and then we would have to test this trend line over here um not the most bullish so i guess uh it's looking a little bit more bearish than than i hope uh again i'm not in this uh, in this trade i know a lot of people are in this trade so i would be a little bit uh concerned if you're in this trade i would highly uh again it's, it's hard to phrase things correctly here because i don't want to recommend anything <laughs> legally i don't want to be you know i'm not a financial advisor i'm not licensed to be one so you know just take this for what it is which is just some guy on youtube commenting but um if it were me i would be looking to take profit up here um if you're super bullish on it take some profit and just hold the position with a tight target uh stop loss i mean and uh just see how it goes. If it rolls over, then and you take your profit, then you can buy at a lower amount, a uh, lower price, maybe at a twenty dollar give or take. I think one of the last videos, I think that that was one of the uh, the points that we were looking at, which kind of makes sense because the fifty EMA is lining up with this horizontal and the sixty one point eight level, so that's going to be a nice level of uh, support down there. Um, I don't anything could happen, but it will take a little bit of effort to break below that. But it's gone up so fast and so hard that it could could happen. So let's go on to something else. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to tie into this. Just a price action in here, and you know, price action Fibonacci's and the uh, the trend lines are enough enough for me to be uh, on the uh, cautious side. I don't even want to say bearish because we're so early into this. This could be one of those uh, bear traps. And then the market just rallies tomorrow. They can announce that they have a coronavirus vaccine. And then you see the markets hit new all-time highs. And then everybody gets screwed. That's a bear. <laughs> so you got to take it day by day and just be smart. Manage your risk. Consult a professional. Um, what's another stock that right now might be? Oh, let's take a look at Apple. Apple, I know, um, 
I believe is is going to be one of the most affected ones. That's at least that's what I read on uh, Market Watch. Let's see if it was on the front page. Oh dear God! An Apple engineer killed in Tesla SUV crash. Um, that's not it. Let's look up here. We can look at a few of them real quick. So. I know that they have some supply issues for sure because obviously almost all their factories are in China. So yeah, you can see this nice little dump here. Yeah, yeah, this doesn't look too hot here. Um, especially today's action is almost almost an engulfing bar. Some people would call this an engulfing bar because this bar completely, the body of this candle encapsulates or engulfs uh, engulfs or engulfs <laughs> uh, the previous body. Um, the way I was uh, taught, the full body of the of the current candle would have to engulf the full body and wicks, or tails and whatever you want to call it, shadows and. <laughs> um, for it to be a, a proper engulfing. But a lot of people that I've talked to consider this enough to be an engulfing bar. So long story short, it, to me, the name of the, of the candle doesn't really matter. This was a doji, uh, and in this, which means indecision. So the market was still like, what the heck is going on? I don't know what to do. And then you have this super bearish. So the market opened up here, rallied a little bit, and then goes, you know what? What the? and then um, just dumped. So this is, at the end of the day, psychologically, this is bearish. The, the market is bearish on, on Apple, on everything, to be fair, as we can see from this beautiful uh, chart here on the left, on the right, sorry, <laughs> uh, blood red over there. So yeah, just not the picture you'd like to see if you're a bull. Uh, again, I don't, let me go back to the weekly to make sure this is drawn correctly. On a weekly, so if we go to this uh, the swing low of one thirty eight, give or take one forty two, on uh, December thirty first, two thousand eighteen, and with a swing high of let's see if it was this, yeah, it was this day, um, three twenty seven eighty five. We have a fifty percent retracement, which is basically at this horizontal. So that's a lot of confluence right there. Um, those two things to me are, are huge. And we don't have some EMAs. Some EMAs have actually crossed above. So it's very likely that we'll have our first support. Well, actually, our first support you can see is right there at the 20 EMA. Um, we'll have to see what the next couple of days, uh, what happens in the next couple of days. And then if it breaks below that, obviously the 382 will be your next level of support with the 50 EMA crawling up to act as support there as well. If it breaks below that, then we have that 50% retracement, which is uh, technically a very, again, it's just a natural, when you have a trend, you know, an uptrend like this or a, a rally, whatever you want to call it, a uh, 50% retracement is usually common. It's not, it's just, it's it's common. Uh, it could go as low as a 618, excuse me, 118, which is 212.99, $212. Um, but I can see this horizontal and this Fibonacci 50% level being uh, tough to break through, in my honest opinion. So, uh, yeah, not not terribly bullish there. Um, and we gap down here, so that's it's not pretty. Uh, let's go to Amazon and see how that looks. I, don't know, you should, I think I have done a video on Amazon. So let's see. Amazon. Wait, no. AMZ. All right, so we are on the weekly. Let's go. Too much crap. Take this off. This one off. Yeah, let's take this one off and then let's draw. So we have this. I'm on a weekly and we have this trend line that goes seemingly forever to 2008. So we had one, two touches. Yeah, so that one's acted pretty, pretty solid. Um, the charts, if I switch them over, huh, that's interesting. Is that the right chart? Huh. 
I'm not sure what happened there. Let me go back to my log chart. Actually, you know what? Let's play with this one for now. Actually, let's go back to the log. Usually, one of the reasons why I like the log chart is because when you have such price difference, so when you go from like a low of, I don't know what is this, $26, and then on the same chart page, you have a high of 2,182. It's just, I like to put it on log, and that way I have a better perspective of how price action actually has, has changed. So I'm gonna take this one off because a little bit confusing right now for me and I want to do maybe one or two more so I want to have to look into that one but anyways swing low swing high up here I there we go that one was uh, more proper there so we have some horizontals here now when I drew these I don't know if I drew these on a weekly or on a monthly this one I drew most likely on a monthly. There seems like a better level to me. Well, doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a zone. And then this one here, probably on a weekly. So let me zoom out on the weekly, this horizontal. I think I was trying to catch this low here. Let me take this one off for now. As it is, we have enough stuff on the screen. All right. So we have this trend line from here. So this is from December 2018, which is that swing low. So we've tagged one swing low, two swing lows, and then almost had a third uh, connection here. But it's, you know, it's, in my opinion, it's, uh, it's a good trend line. Obviously, you need three touches of a trend line to confirm it. Uh, but that's good enough for me, at least for now. So I would see that the 38.2 act as, well, actually the first level of support would be the 20 EMA, which is above. So that's your first uh, line of defense, I guess you could say. The 50 EMA is lining up nicely with the 382 here. So we have the trend line, 382, and the 50 EMA acting as support. So this little section here looks like a, a nice little support area. So it, in my opinion, I think it would take a lot for uh, for Amazon to break below there. Uh, if it does break below there, then again, the 50% level would be, and that lines up with a horizontal, which is pretty much where the Fibonacci is. That's kind of what you want to see for confluence, that things are lining up. So I would say that, um, yeah, I think it's if it's going to keep tanking, then most likely the 20 MA won't hold up, and it'll just dip to the trend line slash 382 here uh, and the 50 EMA. That's that's going to be a nice little support there in my point of view. So that would be a target of $1,850. And if it breaks below that, then most likely it would be the 50% level at 1746 And then we have to play it by ear. Let's see what happens there. But uh, yeah, everything is just tanking because of, of the fundamental you know, the, the news. That's that's basically what it is. Um, let's look at two more. Maybe uh, let's you know what. Let's look at the the Nasdaq Composite. I believe it's I X I C. Yeah, this is a bigger picture of the market, and and basically you can see that everything is is going that direction. So no matter how many stocks we keep pulling up, it's the market itself is is leading the charge here and whether you're looking at the blue chips or actually let's look at ibm just to to make sure but i suspect it's going to be the same same yeah same thing so let's go back to ixic and it's yeah it's basically the same thing i'm sure if we look at the uh the smp it'll be the same idea. So here we have first touch at the 23.6%, which is a 20 EMA. So we're on a weekly. So that's acting as support. Then your next level is that 50 EMA at the 38.2. I mean, these things are lining up perfectly for uh, to give you confluence and confidence in where things may go and where support levels and targets may may come uh so yes yeah, so if if things keep dumping then yeah you can see it i mean right now it's already there if it continues tanking 
on the Nasdaq composite, I see it going from 89.77 all the way down to 84.44, uh, which, yeah, it's close to a horizontal here. So this horizontal would be give or take, give or take. Oh, why would it do that there? There we go. Give or take there. Um, that one's not bad, but this one looks to me a more, a more respected. Uh, let me change the color on it. Maybe make it a uh, blue. It's so thick. There. So you can see that. Uh, yeah, if it if it breaks below this thirty eight point two level, then it'll probably go to this horizontal ish area, um, just above the fifty percent level. So you have some some uh, some help there. So it's a big target, obviously between basically between eight thousand up to nine thousand. Uh, right now, it's basically at nine thousand. Next stop, if it keeps tanking, maybe the eight forty four four section, and then. 8167, give or take, all the way down to maybe 8,000. Um, who knows? And then for the last one for today, let's look at the SMP. So this is a, a lot of little things in one convenient podcast. <laughs> so, okay, so here we have some previous trend lines that I drew. Uh, this one was just a 40, well, Whenever I drew it, I didn't tag it, so maybe yeah, it's good enough there. Forty-five. So when I drew it, it was a forty-five there. So we had this uh, uptrend going from September in two thousand nineteen all the way. So it tagged swing low, swing low, swing low. So it acted beautifully as support, broke through it, broke above it again, and then obviously in the last couple of days has broken below. And then I had drawn from this swing high a 45 because that would give me a better idea of where, you know, where would, where the market could keep going. If it breaks and closes below this uh, trend line, then yeah, we're looking at a pretty, you know, it's, it's not, it's not bullish. It would be, uh, for me, it would be clearly bearish. Um, and at that point, we'll be looking for the same thing. Uh, where where can we find support? Uh, we already broke quickly below the 20, uh, the 20 EMA on a weekly. So we're looking for the next level being the 50 EMA, uh, which is just above the 38.2. I think that if it keeps going this quickly, that it would uh, find support more likely at the 300 level. The Yeah, so right now it's at the 50 EMA is at 305. The 382 and this trend line are going to meet probably at the 300 level. So between 305 and 300, that's the uh, the little range of uh, that I would suspect. Um, we if it keeps you know if it keeps uh, tanking on us, then most likely we're going to look at the 305 section, 305 to 300. And if it breaks below that, then it could get a little you know a little hairy. And then the next likely target is the 618, which is a 274, 275 dollar region. Uh, yeah, 275 would be my next target support because we have a horizontal, we have the 61.8, and we have the 200 slowly climbing up. So the next couple of, well, it's on a weekly, so it would take a, a little bit of a while, but uh, maybe by the time it does get to this point, the 200 EMA acts as uh, additional support and confluence to the 61.8. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, it's just looking, uh, it's not looking very pretty, but hey, that's the market. And you're going to have crazy amount of uh, bullish days and then you're going to have bearish days as well. We've been blessed with quite a few bullish, um, basically a bullish decade. So, I mean, you, you get some and you, you give some. So... That's basically all for today. Like if you haven't already. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and uh, share the video with somebody you think might enjoy it. And that's it for now. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.